Mm-hmm. You know, think about it. Hey, I'm probably going to get a raise in January. Well, then I should raise up my 401k contribution or I should raise up my IRA contribution. Um, you know, try try to always save more. We all know inflation is happening. So a million dollars today is not going to be a million dollars in 20 years. So think about that, that you've got to, even though you, you think you save a lot right now, you've got you've to keep upping that percent as you get older. Welcome to How to Money with Cole and Cole. I'm Cole. And I'm Cole. We coach people every day on their money and how to plan for the future. As financial advisors, we're here to have an honest conversation on investing, retirement, and everything in between. At Full Swing Financial Planning, we're here to empower you to take control of your plan, your way, for your financial future. So let's talk money. And sports. Welcome back to How to Money with Cole and Cole. I'm your host, Bailey Ashbrook. And I'm ready for Christmas. What about you guys? Yeah, I, I, Christmas is my favorite season, so I'm I'm definitely ready for it. I love it. The lights at home, the trees, the Amazon packages just are oh, showing up I, like crazy. Be, they, you know, so someone's got to do the shop. I, I think there's been an Amazon package on my doorstep every day this week. <laughs> my <laughs> wife's ordering stuff. People are sending stuff to my wife. I'm just like. Those are the real heroes. Have you Those seen the, UPS drivers and FedEx drivers? Has anyone seen the the like memes or gifts or whatever it's where it's like dad like waking up on Christmas morning like surprises everyone else because he has no idea what's in him? Yeah, that's me. But it's <laughs> true. <laughs> Actually, me and my sister were talking about this, and I was venting. I was like, Luke's just gonna watch his kids open presents and be like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's cool. awesome. Cool, last, great gift, mom. Last year, uh, Lily did all of our Christmas shopping. We didn't even talk about it. I just like let her do whatever we want. And so Christmas morning, she's like, oh, I know what that gift is. And I'm like, I look at her, I'm like. What is it? And she's like, oh, you'll see it in a minute when they open. I'm like, I want to know now, though. <laughs> this is your PSA. You are not letting them. They're having to do it, just so you know. <laughs> I didn't. Did I say letting? One of you did. <laughs> no. yeah. All right. No. Well, I do have a Definitely question. Not. What do you think the U.S. dollar, how many people, how much money is spent on retail sales for Christmas in the U.S.? Just in the U.S.? Yep, 2023. Like what? What, is, what does it start? Like oh. December first or November is when it says it usually starts. So how much in the U.S. dollars? Which was it, it did increase from last year, which I'm kind of surprised. But this winter season, including Black Friday, Cyber Monday, etc., how much do you think the holiday retail sales in the United States are? Oh my gosh, they have two spent. trillion. Mm. Cole J. They don't. They had no idea I was going to ask. Is this. it with a? Is there a trillion? Is yeah, it? Yeah, I'm tr- not giving. There's an illion. <laughs> <laughs> Alien billion. <laughs> Uh, God, you said two trillion. I don't know. Uh, you know, one one trillion. I'll just go split the difference. There. I wow, have no those idea. Prices, right? Are you googling the answer? No, I'm doing some math. Oh, so I just except did that. that it gives me th- like a weird answer. So yeah. I'm just gonna give it a good yes. I'll say three trillion. Why not? Nine hundred and fifty billion. Okay. Well, you're close. And we're that's all over, lot. though, so it doesn't count. Uh, Red prices, right? right we'll right. see. We're all yeah. over. I think that's winter. crazy. That's nuts. Which that's kinda, a lot. So, go ahead. What is the average per person then? Oh, so, does that's, it tell you? So, what I was thinking is like there's 330 million people in the U.S., right? And a lot of those are kids. So, I was like 200 million uh, people that actually buy presents. And I was thinking $1,000 a yeah. person. That's how I got to $2 trillion. Wait, would that be $2 trillion? I don't know. Roughly $1,600 <laughs> <Close laughs> per person. $1,600 a person. In American plans. Yeah, there you go. And to spend, which will tie in because we're going to talk about Christmas, man. We're going to talk about all things year-end and preparing for 2024. Don't go crazy if you can't afford those Christmas presents, but it is what it is. Cole, what's your favorite thing about Christmas? I, I think it's really just just being at home with my kids and and like listening to music. Uh, my wife loves to like bake and make cookies and um, you know just just spending time with my immediate family, mm-hmm. um, playing games, things like that. Cool, Jay. Yeah, I mean, I gotta echo that. I would say I was just thinking your your sidebar here. Your wife cooking. Oh, in the I was sweets. thinking the same. Thing. We've got so we've had so many people oh, give us sweets, there. cookies, like. I feel like I put on 50 pounds in the past two weeks. Cole and I said this morning, I've ate more sweets the last two weeks than I think I've ate all year. I didn't want to say anything, like, but your oh my face gosh. looked a little bigger in the camera. Today. Yeah, I know. I probably, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Don't tell was, him that. <laughs> I'm kidding. I was going to give a shout out to Molly because if I'd get Molly's canceled baking, if I said that. <laughs> I was told Cole, if I live with Molly, ooh, 
you can say it yeah it's a little it's a little rough uh around the office yeah so uh we appreciate it although yeah. we appreciate the, the snacks and everything um but my dad actually called me he's like hey what would you guys like at the office the other day i was like no do not bring me anything no more cinnamon rolls paul <laughs> no yeah. more we had crumble cookies the other day yes yeah. because oh since we moved to full swing november yeah. 13th and and again thank you to everyone that has brought us things um you know, but we have uh, we have had plenty of people bring things by and, and congratulate us, and it's and it's very humbling, and, and we appreciate it. But at the same time, we're we're all putting on weight. <laughs> um, speaking of, why don't you give everyone a brief? summary of where we're at with our transition now that you're talking about it yeah so full swing uh financial planning started november 13th of this year uh we have transitioned over uh a lot of clients uh accounts over from uh, from our former broker dealer so we're uh we're probably i would say 75 percent uh, uh, through our transition uh you know if you haven't heard from us and you had an account with us before be patient uh we're trying to get out to everyone uh, but it, but it is a, a lot of people that we've already uh, reached out to but uh it's been going good and and we're really happy with our change to lpl as our broker dealer they've been excellent with this transition and uh you know we are we're excited to be full swing financial yeah i think uh it, it's cool because we on this podcast you know we've talked to a ton of entrepreneurs people starting businesses obviously we've all been in our own business in certain certain ways but it's it's been really cool to see the changes and us implement, you know, new ideas with our staff, the leadership changes and different, uh, seeing the staff bring ideas. And it, it's been really, you um, know, it's been a really good and uh, motivating, exciting, like a lot of new energy in the office, I think, which is good. And we all kind of needed that. And, you know, it's a great time of year to Christmas. We're, you know, thankful for that stuff. Thankful, for great staff, great clients. And uh, it's been fun. It's very relatable. I think the yeah. whole transition has been for a lot of, a lot of our guests that we've had. Yeah, I think right people to make this transition successful. And like, we're finally getting to a point where we're not massively reaching out. We can actually like service people, get them set up online, like help them with where we're at. But LPL has been amazing. Like their technology, it's been great. Yeah, absolutely. So speaking of it's year end, what should I do financially? Let's go through it's year end. Life's crazy. Holiday's crazy. But how do I set myself up for success in 2024 financially? Buy a bunch of Christmas presents. <laughs> <laughs> and put Bailey's name on them. Right, right. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so uh, planning, uh, budgeting, uh, thinking uh, logically, not just through what what am I going to do next year, but like what do, have a five-year plan, 10-year plan. I think there's there's a lot of things that you can do at the end of the year to, uh, and, and Cole's going to talk about that as far as uh, tax planning, uh, but also for maybe maybe a little bit of our younger crowd, the saving, mm -hmm. you know, think about it. Hey, I'm probably going to get a raise in January. Well, then I should raise up my 401k contribution or I should raise up my IRA contribution. Um, you know, try, try to always save more. We all know inflation is happening. So a million dollars today is not going to be a million dollars in 20 years. So think about that, that you've got to even though you you think you save a lot right now, you've got to you've got to keep upping that percent as you get older. Yeah, I, I think one thing um, would be to celebrate the success that you you may have had or had or hit a goal, even if it's a small goal. You're at the end of the year. You know, that's always the thing is be be grateful for what you did accomplish. You might not have hit. I know we did our you know our goals, and and I I already made an excuse off mic on something <laughs> that I didn't hit you know, or, or wasn't on track to hit. But I do think it's important to reflect on some of the good things you did do because then you can build on them. And that's where I think Cole's going to build on that. Hey, I, I got to 10% my 401k and I need to get to 12 or whatever it might be on that percentage. And, but I do think it's important to, to have that little, you know, gratitude moment and then reflect on it. And then, okay, what are we doing next year? Let's time to move forward and let's progress this the next step. I had or no, go ahead. I had someone reach out to me recently and said, you know, my goal in 2023 was to meet with a financial advisor and I didn't. And they're trying to like get it in before the end of the year. <laughs> oh, shut I, up. Thought, I, yeah, love it. I thought it was funny. And I'm like, okay, yeah, no, we can still try to squeeze that in. Like that was their goal for 2020. Cool. So also reviewing, and I know you're big about that, Bailey, is like reviewing what you actually set for goals and, and saying, okay, why didn't I accomplish this, you know, this goal? Uh, what do I want to do in next year maybe to accomplish that goal or uh revamp that goal and uh looking at looking at the things that you wanted to do along with the uh, things that you want to do in the future 
Yeah, I was just gonna say reflect and review. Reflect and review. And I also think too, if you're and I was gonna add this, if you have a spouse, like actually sitting down and being intentional, okay, this is what we spent last year. This is where our money meant. What do we really want to accomplish this year? And I think that's a hard thing, maybe more in couples, is like you always hear one and sorry, Luke, I'm gonna throw you under the bus. But like I'm obviously way more involved with it and like intentional, but like if you do it together as a unit, I think that makes such a big difference hitting your goals going forward. So that was going to be one of my like Tad tips. That That's a, a goal in my household or of mine is to have some more ongoing conversations about, about money to be more of a team. Um, that is, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm getting maybe ahead of the horse of like something I want to do for next year is to where Chelsea and I do have some time that we dedicate to just our finances because we got a lot going on, you know, a lot of different moving pieces and she's not always privy, but I, I do find, um, you know, I get a lot of motivation when she's more involved mm-hmm. or she asks questions and is, is showing interest, but sometimes, you know, it's, you know, it's all prioritizing the time because I think we have time for things, but you got to make it a priority for it to happen. And I think it's so much more rewarding when you're building together where you feel like you're not dragging, not saying you are dragging, but that's what it feels like when one person's just taking the lead by themselves and making decisions where if you're both in there, you're building and creating something together. It's, I just hear that a lot in meetings like too, like, oh, my spouse handles it. And like, obviously I'm not going there, but you never know what's going to happen in the future. I just think tying your goals together financially is such a great momentum thing for it. And it, and it doesn't have to be complex. I, mm-hmm. I, I do think, you know, our you know, financial advisor, our universe, you know, people get overwhelmed sometimes like, oh, I don't know a lot about that. But it can be as simple as, hey, I want to, I want to max out my Roth IRA for next year, or Mm -hmm. I'm at 5,000 this year. I want to get by 2025, I want to get to 6,500 in my Roth. Like those are very simple things and and the little increments matter. And um, same thing with, you know, with your family, just taking small baby steps, you know, and, and the camaraderie there you have. So we're budgeting, we're reviewing, we're being intentional, we're saving, we're getting on a plan. So let's talk about also what happened in 2023. There's some big moments and things that impacted us. And financially, I know a lot of people's number one goal is probably to save more. It's a little hard when prices rise, but a lot of things happen. What else happened, guys? I think the, I think the biggest thing that, that everyone's talked about was, is interest rates. I mean, and we've talked about it so many times on the podcast, but, uh, interest rates, uh, now, now trending downward, not, not as fast as they went upward during the year, <laughs> but they're definitely trending downward. Um, but that was the, the hottest topic I would say, um, inflation also being a hot topic. And that's the reason of the raising of interest rates. So they're all, they're correlated, but that was probably the thing that happened, uh, that, that comes top of mind to me. I would say the returns in the stock market. Now we're not through the year yet. This this podcast comes out in a couple of days, which will be what what day? The twenty first, twenty second, twenty second Friday. Yeah, today's December nineteenth, and uh, I looked. I think the S and P was up somewhere like twenty five percent year to date, somewhere in that range. Uh, you know, I, that's going to be a headline. You you look if we hold just even through through this year into you know January, and then say, oh, it was twenty plus percent, thirty plus percent in the Nasdaq. Uh, definitely a headline. I don't think anyone, any analysts or, or people that are so-called specialists in the market, mm-hmm. uh, were calling for, for 20% plus returns in the S and P 500 this year. So that's gotta be a major headline. Um, uh, I, I do think that's a, that's a, a, uh, we're always talking about this and I use this, the time in the market versus timing the market. And if you uh, were trying to time the market and you were sitting out in January and didn't get back in, you didn't really get a great opportunity this year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and we had some volatility at times, but boy, you missed out, you know, this is a year where you, you could have a quarter of your portfolio up. Yeah. this year, which and, is crazy. And I think that always just goes right back to being intentional, talking about it, doing, I know we're so repetitive and I'm just saying this, preaching this. Cause I do it myself. Like I budget, I review, like putting in the monthly dollars, making sure I'm making my increases. Like I've already increased my contribution for next year going in my RA, but like just do the little things and don't worry about the noise around. Just keep your stuff together, keep your household together. And you'll be surprised how much more freedom you feel in that. One headline that I think that we haven't discussed a whole lot is, is uh, people going into debt. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of stats out there, like more people are going into debt, credit card debts on the rise. Um, there's there's a lot of that, and and I'm not really entirely sure why. 
Um, I think it's more people overspending their, uh, their income and, and not, not budgeting possibly. So I, I think that headline has been out there and it's not something that we've really discussed a whole lot. Cause it's not something that we it's can not really fun, control. But, right. it's, it, but I think it's good to put in a light at it. Cause it's true. I have a stat here. 39% of Americans have gone deeper into debt in 2023 and 35% believe they will always be in debt the rest of their lives. It's a that's pretty big numbers. Some of that's interest, you know, interest rates, credit card yeah. debt, right? Interest rates on credit cards are, you know, thirty percent. If you got poor credit score, you know, as high high as they've been in all time. I think credit card interest rates for people that have, you know, worse credit scores, and that's where that does matter. If you are using credit cards and you have a bad credit score, you are going to pay a significant interest rate. And we're talking about Christmas people putting those sixteen hundred dollars that the average you know person's buying. That's probably going on a credit card for half the country or more, you know, and that's, that's a little scary on things. Now, one good thing is we did see some wage inflation this year. So that's where, you know, yes, we had inflation, but wages are up. So Mm -hmm. we do, uh, there is a balance there and it's, it's, I don't think anyone's got the the answer why, but, um, and it's also, I I think personally, it's the ease of buying stuff. I think it's the ease of buying stuff. I think it's scary. Like how quick as a consumer we can, we can get tomorrow. I can get something on my door tomorrow. Also too, I wonder if like you think about it, everything we keep talking about interest rates are up inflation is up wages are up but they're not up as much as the rest of it and you wonder like maybe it's that people don't re-budget themselves when things go up like halfway through this year i had to sit down me and lily sat down and we had to up our grocery bill because (sighs) groceries are more expensive you know and you wonder if like people just don't do that and they just assume oh things are going to stay the same well now they're spending more in different areas but they're not accounting for it in their budget so well we don't have the money let's just put it on the credit card and then end up in debt. So I have, I actually have a look question. At Caleb, look at Caleb. Yeah, you know, I, was I was like, like, I, was like That's awesome, <laughs> I, man. Was I like, love it. Yeah. I love it. I have a question. And um, so we talk about all this changing in 2023 with next year being an election year. Do you think it will have positive, negative effects uh, on I, all of this? Great question, Caleb. From the political, maybe from the political yeah, perspective. It's, yeah, I mean, it's huge. top of mind for a lot of people right now. So we got a lot of candidates roaming through Iowa here the next month. So. For sure. So, so here, here's my opinion on it, and this is not uh, political at all. Uh, so, as far as an incumbent rerunning for president, um, they are going to do whatever they can to stimulate the market, whether it gives the image that they did it or not. Um, but they're going to try to do anything to stimulate the market, make the stock market go up because people feel good when that's that's oh, happening. It's easier to get so, reelected when when there's green on your statements. It's, right, yeah. right. When the, it's if, it's if, the truth. No, it's, I know. It's, it's, it's 100% the, the truth. That. It is. Um, because, you know, the first couple of years that Biden was president, the market didn't do so good, and people blamed Joe Biden that, yep. that it was his fault. Um, I'm not, again, I'm not getting into the politics of whether or not it was his fault. We're or not anything taking like a just, stance on our no, political views. Absolutely, here. 100%. No. <laughs> So but, what are your guys? So, so, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not getting into that. But my view is next year, uh, they the Congress and the president will do whatever they can to do to stimulate the economy. So I see positive returns in the stock market continuing um, along with, uh, you know, trying to try to stimulate the dollar and make it more valuable. And, and the, you know, the economic data in the Fed is putting out data points that says that the Fed funds rates probably going to go down. Um, now, who knows? That can change, and that's all, you know, talk at this point until there's real action. But that's also historically lower interest rates are better for the stock market, better for business. You know, borrowing costs are down. Companies that borrow money, you know, growth happens. You know, generally when when interest rates are going lower, but you know, there's always a balance there on things, and it kind of pairs up. There are some things that you know, if you if you look at it, it looks like 2024 could be a pretty good year who knows of what happens or or what you know there's always something on the horizon and always a risk and that's where i don't think we're ever in that game of calling the market you know in one year and that's that's not the game so people ask us uh, that all the time but i think we we go into like there's much more than that it's like what happens next year for most people does not matter with their portfolio yes they want it to everyone wants it emotionally to go up but ultimately if you've got a plan and again mm-hmm. we're coming back to that of, was, of where you're going you know a one year is never going to make or break you in the market i was just going to say that if we've learned anything we can't really plan for anything i don't know if you guys remember this thing called covid yeah, yeah of course <laughs> like you know what i mean that's again i'm just broken record take care of what you can take care of because you never know what's coming down the pipeline let's do a little dollars and cents dollar dollar bills y'all
couple year end reminders here. Okay, so so everyone out there, make sure your RMDs, your required minimum distributions, you have up until December thirty first. Uh, make sure now it is a new new penalty, but it used to be fifty percent. If you didn't take your required distribution by year end, you could get your income tax plus fifty percent. Now it's knocked it down to twenty five percent, but that's still a significant amount. So don't forget to take your RMDs. So and that's out. Call your financial advisor on December 31st yes. at 4 p.m. Yes, please <laughs> do not do, not do that. Do that. <laughs> so that is out of IRAs and inherited IRAs that you're required to take those out of and non-qualified stretch annuities, you would know if you have one. Yep. What Impor- else, important thing. Yeah. And then the, the last thing, you know, it's Christmas, the, you know, giving season. Holly, make sure that you get your charitable donations. If you're going to do those, make sure if you want credit for them in the, the 2023 tax year, they're also done, you know, postmarked out to the charity of your choice by the end of the year. Yeah. So a lot of things you have until April 15th of next year to do like Roth contributions, IRAs, SEP contributions, things like that. These things you cannot do after December 31st. Yep. So that's why we wanted to mention them on this episode, got to get those charitable distributions in RMDs. You got to get those in sort of December 31st. And again, just a reminder, do not call your financial advisor on December 31st. Please do not do that. I've had to people walk in out. at four o'clock on December 31st. I'm like, yeah, yeah. It, unless they have it sitting in cash, there's nothing we yeah. can do. Yep. It that's is. Good. I've had a couple of those times too. So let's make it a little lighter. Cause RMDs, that's not that fun, but like Iowa basketball looks pretty darn good. The Iowa women. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's yeah, what I'm better, talking about. They played the prime right. time hour. <laughs> better set that up correct. Yeah. Caitlin Clark about to cap the record at some point this year. Yeah. Scoring. I think she's projected in late February to break the, the all time scoring record. She's a little over 3,000 right now. And mm-hmm. uh, got to play at her hometown the other day. It was fun. 11 and 1. They only lost to K State at home. And then, um, and which, then beat them. Yeah, and then beat them the next time. Uh, you know, everyone has a bad game, but. Uh, they won at Iowa State, which obviously Wade, being our last episode, yeah. said it was one of the hardest places to play. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're they're good. They're fun. They won at Wells the other night, um, Wells Fargo Arena here, in, uh, or not here, but in Des Moines. Uh, there was a uh, men's women's doubleheader, and the women's was the night game, the feature the night game. Night cap. Yeah, that's awesome. Never happened. Love so to see great. that. So NFL, it's getting close to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, who? What are the number one seeds right now? Oh my gosh! The Ravens, uh, the Ravens, and the Niners. Cole P's and, picks, and who we will give, we will give credit where credit is due. Yeah. Cole P at this point does have the number <laughs> one like seeds the, picked. Looks like the leader it's in the clubhouse too right soon. now. Too yeah. soon, anything can yeah. happen yeah. in sports. Hey, hey, also, quick, how quick many, and I got the Swifties behind the Chiefs, man. Oh my That's gosh, power. Give me a break. Let's Did, let's let's recap what our picks were, oh, okay. and then we can talk about where they're at. So you had the Chiefs and the 49ers? No, Chiefs? I did the Cowboys. Oh, the trying. Chiefs and the Cowboys. Should the Cowboys I, are good, though. Oh, I shouldn't have done it. Luke's too much. Too much. Out. They're they're kind of showing their true colors here. Yeah. The last game, they got their butts kicked. I asked Luke about that last night. Why? Like, you know, just dig just at Just stir him up. Just stir him up a little bit. At the bowling league, I heard yeah. you guys all bowled horrible. Tyler bowled 280 last night. That's so. not you guys. Yeah. yeah. He's a beast. Yeah. Oh. I had to, yes, yeah, so, come on, let's stay on, ta- on task here. <laughs> I had the um, who would I have the Dolphins oh. and the Niners. So I, you know, I'm solid. I'm a two seed and a one seed. I still think you know, mm-hmm. uh, but I don't know the Dolphins playing on the road at in Baltimore, you know, for the AFC Championship couldn't well, you know wouldn't be a, probably a good mix. So um, I had the um, let's see here. Oh, the 49ers and the Bengals. And about three weeks ago, it looked like the Bengals weren't even going to make the playoffs because they were out of the playoff picture, and Joe Burrow got hurt. And then they've been on a heater and won three in a row, and now they're up to the six seed. So I don't expect them to make the Super Bowl at this point. But if they make the playoffs, I'll yep, be happy. It's a win for you. Yep. But the 49ers, Who's that quarterback right now? Uh, Jake, Jake Browning. Browning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the Washington, co- yeah. Washington quarterback. And so, um, yeah, that's been an interesting thing. I just hope they make the playoffs, and I'll be happy. The 49ers were my pick to win the Super Bowl, so that's still looking good. Yeah, so all all of us did pretty well. I, I had the the Ravens and the Niners so far, um, and they're both the number one seeds as we we said before. But that <laughs> what does the winner get again? What did we say? Uh, the, we we picked what the loser gets, and uh, the loser has to wear <laughs> has to wear. We all get to decide what uh, jersey the loser has to wear, and they have to wear it for a whole episode of the podcast. I love it. Yeah. So, but a lot of can happen in the NFL. Yeah. Um, Speaking it's, it's of crazy. football, Florida State snubbed the uh, what they're 
there's basically like a flu, the state of Florida is like suing suing the college football committee or something I over this, really, right? I didn't know yeah, that. there's like this. I DeSantis was talking about it on something. Or I don't know. It's cra- crazy, but we'll have to worry about yeah. it. Was it was it next year? The year when does it go expand? Next, yeah. next year. year, next year. So you know, and then there'll be a, a you know issue on the per, first person out on the so next the, one. There. So the question is, did they get it right? Snubbing Florida State. I don't know what you do. There, there is no right answer because the, the the committee had to make a decision. Okay, do we put in Florida State, who hasn't really played anybody, and their starting quarterback, who is their star, got hurt and is not going to play the rest of the year, or do we put in Texas and Alabama, who Alabama just beat the number one team in the country? It's like they couldn't have done it if they wanted to put in the top, the, what they thought were the four best teams. I thought they left Georgia out. Uh, in my honest opinion, I think they, they should have left Texas out and they should have put in Michigan, Washington, Alabama, and Georgia. If they wanted what they thought were the four best teams, if they wanted the four teams that deserved it, then Georgia Florida hasn't State lost should the game have been in. Two in. years, you know, I was like, that's it's hard. And it's hard, but it's like, what have you done for me? Like, they're the most recent loss. So they, they the public opinion had to have them out. Also, you know? too, it was going to be hard for Georgia once they lost because Texas beat Bama. Yeah. Bama beat Georgia. Therefore, if you're going to go by head to head, it has yeah. to be Texas, Bama, yeah. Georgia. So, yeah. Then yep. next year, this won't even be a discussion. It'll be fine. So, did the committee get it right? Yes and no. I, there, there was no right was a answer. Lose, lose. Yeah. Win, there, win, there was whatever. five teams that deserved it. Six teams, actually six teams that deserved it, and that's why they got to go to an eighteen playoff. Pa- politician Peterson, politician Peterson, right there. <laughs> you would be good on a board like that. <laughs> yeah, Who, who's uh okay? Who's your pick for the the title game? Uh, cool. Michigan, Michigan versus yep. who? Oh, uh, what what are, is it? It's Washington, Washington, Texas. Texas. I, I'm gonna say just because I don't think I think the Longhorns are kind of the the fakers of the top four there, so I'm gonna go Michigan, Washington. Michigan wins national title on on Harbaugh's chaos through the year. So you're going chalk, okay? Yeah. Caleb, I'll say just to be different. I'll say Michigan, Texas, Michigan. Oh, two Michigans. I'm Billy, just, do you care enough? No. Okay. <laughs> I so don't. I got Mich- I got Michigan, uh, Washington as well, and Michigan winning. Everyone's got Michigan winning it, so they won't. They're, of they're, course, for sure. They They'll yeah, probably sure lose to really Alabama, yeah. but <laughs> I think I said. For, for the last about eight weeks, I thought Michigan was the best team in the country, and and they they've proven that. But uh, we'll see we'll see in the in the playoff. Good thing we don't get paid to pick sports, right? I love, and then we can move on. But when men get in a room and they all analyze sports, and my husband does it, and I'm like, you guys should just be coaches. You guys are so intelligent. Like, why are you doing what you're doing? Just go. Is, is there, I'll go. I sense some sarcasm. <laughs> Every bit. guy. All right, next like, next topic, I guess. Next all topic. Right, so let's just recap. We have transitioned to full swing financial planning. Pumped. Best move probably of 2023. For us. I would, I would agree. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We're going to recap some like key points. Sit down, take the time, and I promise you, if you aim at nothing, you will hit nothing. But if you aim at something, you will get a little closer to your goal. So if you're, I'm not saying you're going to have to be perfect, but if you sit down. That's make, a Bailey Ashbrook quote right there. Yeah, there you go. Budget. Aim at nothing, you hit nothing. Yeah. Aim at something, you'll at least be closer. Yeah, well, that's some quote. But <laughs> I love point, it. It's true, though. Like, And I'm just, this is like my soapbox. So many people, and I hear it in people my age, every age, I think they just want to put it behind them and ignore the money and think that it'll it'll work out. Even if you have debt, and I'm not saying you do, or whatever your goals are, to put it in front of you, put it on paper, do your net worth statement, make some goals, budget, review. If you have a spouse, sit down and just be on the same page. You will feel so much better, even if you do not hit those goals, because you will continue to get closer. What do you guys think? What's your biggest best tip? I love start? it. You're fired up there. That was that was a nice nice yeah. ending uh, to the year from you right yeah, there. Thanks. So. I'm thinking thanks. I need to sit down with my financial advisor over here. I oh, was man. gonna say and that. Have her go through some goals for me. Even if you don't know what you're doing, do ask like, hey, I've never done a budget. How, what do what like help me walk me through one? There are people there for help. I think they're just we're in a world full of information that you can find the resources, and we are a resource for you too. Yeah, there's there's a lot of online help with those types of things, but uh, there are some some keys to getting a budget correct and getting uh, getting the things nailed down that you want to um, save for or pay off. Uh, so it's a it, it is a process, and I think you need to uh, seek some professional help in you, yeah. if you're not getting to the point where you want to be. I use this analogy all the time. I love working out. I couldn't write a workout, a successful workout to save my life because I just don't know how certain muscles work with each other, but I can follow a plan very well. I I have a question. Oh, let's go. So 
Um, no, because this is something I've legitimately thought about in meeting with someone like you. Is there a cost for someone to walk in, sit down with you, and have an analysis done or whatever? There, there is no cost to sit down and, and have a, a have any sort of meeting with us. We don't have an hourly charge or anything like that. Now, if you, the only time that you would get a cost from us is if we drew up. If we, and we would have this agreement all drawn up before you would you would know what the cost would be. But if we put a full plan together together for you, and you weren't going to hold your assets with us, so if you were going to hold your assets at whatever broker dealer, say Edward Jones or wherever, you're going to hold all your assets there, but you want us to do the plan, um, then there would be a a planning charge. But uh, but most people that have their assets with us, we're their financial advisor. That's ninety nine point nine nine percent of people that we work with. Um, we're going to hold the assets. We're going to do the plan. There is no ongoing like fee or charge. Uh, now all of your investments, we will go through how that cost goes and and what our fee is on that. But uh, there is no initial cost. It's so, always always so listeners. You have no excuses. Yeah, that's all. I'm just trying to. And also, I needed to know that too. But anyway, <laughs> good question. You're, you're full of good questions today. But I, I, I'll just echo that as is. It's uh, we we do enjoy those initial meetings. Always, the initial meeting is more just like, what do you got going on? You know, we're we're facilitating the conversation, and then we go and fine tune of what you really need or what your your objectives are. And yeah, we're always transparent on cost upfront, and and a lot of times we'll we'll tell you if we're not the right fit for you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is, we're just helping you with a budget and there might be something where you don't have the assets yet and you just need help with some of those things. And that is something we will do. And, um, we'll, we'll, we'll be really upfront with, with everything associated with yeah. that. Yeah. I'll give a little bit of an example of this and because as fiduciaries, we, we have to do what's right for the client. So, um, you know, I had a client came in that, uh, we were doing an initial meeting and, and she was all pumped up to, to start investing in a Roth IRA and, and do all this stuff. Well, come to find out she had debt and I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to have you, you know, invest when you're, you have 13% debt, we're going to work on paying that off. Now, does that make me any money when she's not investing any money with me? No, but as a fiduciary, that's the thing that she needs the to right, do. It's the right thing to do. It's the plan. As a person, yeah, it's the right yeah. thing to do. And in a situation like that, I'm not going to charge her for that plan. This is more like just advice. But that was two years ago. Now she's investing in Roth. So we're we're always like, if you do the right thing up front for somebody, it's going to come back around. And and so it's not, um, I've only I've only done it one time where I actually charged someone for a plan. And, uh, and that's because they had a very exciting extensive yeah they had a very extensive plan and they couldn't hold their assets with me because they were held somewhere else and they couldn't be moved to me so it was a real weird circumstance but uh that's the only time that i've actually charged for a plan i should charge people to teach them how to budget i would be i'm the budget do my budget wizard. for me do my budget for I me love it it's like oddly satisfying to me you would not want to do my you budget to, you'd have to cut out cut no, out i wouldn't want to do yours cut out of stella's the stella's expenses i'd be like cole j what are all these DoorDash charges every day yeah that is you would see that <laughs> yeah, a lot of food. On the, podcast. the thing is she would tell you to, to, to slow down you'd be like no no, no we kind of had this conversation too is like I don't, I think some people think a budget's restricting and I get at first it might, if you have a lot of debt or whatnot, but if you like sit down, like I really value eating out me and Cole, we're talking about this, him and Chelsea have made a decision like that's important. They're not going to mind spending money eating out and then they might not spend it somewhere else. That might be different for me where I don't value eating out as much, but I might value like expensive workout equipment. You know what I mean? It's just like relative. And if you're taking care of what's important to you, you can enjoy what's important. And you have an understanding where the yeah. money is going. I yes. think that's always a, a, whether it's good or bad, you're like, Hey, I do know I spend this amount. Yes. That's always knowledge is the key for is the first step to starting the plan is like, mm -hmm. Hey, I got to know where things are at. And then you go from there, okay, do we need to change some habits or not? Yes, and, and it's so rewarding that. too if you do want a big purchase, like you have it and then you get it instead of like buying it and like, oh, could we afford that? It's like a different mindset. So yeah, great, great tips. Merry Christmas to everyone. Yes, yes. You know, Merry, next time, happy holidays. Next, yeah. Merry Christmas. You happy New me? Year. <laughs> <laughs> a slap on the back. <laughs> good job, Bailey. Yeah, good. Great budget this year, Bailey. <laughs> So 2024 is this at, will be the last as of today. Of it's 12 days away. So you got That's 12. Crazy. When this comes out, it'll be uh, 10 days, nine days nine away, days 10 away. days away. So they said, don't come to them on the 31st. That gives you one week to do whatever you have left to do. 
Get your planning so, in now, folks. Yep. Don't and, stress. Uh, next episode, they're going to talk about what to do in 2024 once 2024 starts. So, and they're going to set new goals and talk about their 2023 goals. So you'll be want, you'll definitely want to come back and listen to that. Yeah, one. I can't wait to chill the guys. No, I'm just kidding. It's it's encouragement. But I will say this: it's been a great year, and I'm really excited to see where full swing goes in 2024, guys. Yeah, I'll echo that. All right. The key is not the will to win. Everybody has that. It is the will to prepare to win. That is important. Bobby Knight. Go Cubs. You've been listening to How to Money with Cole and Cole, the podcast of Full Swing Financial Planning. To learn more, visit their website at www.fullswingfinancial.com and follow them on Facebook and LinkedIn. For now, I'm Cole. I'm Bailey. And I'm Cole. And we'll see you on the greens. Four. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor, member FINRA, SIPC.